Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much for the invitation. The Repertorium Academicum Germanicum, RAG, is a long-term project of digital history that records and analyzes the biographical data of students for the period from 1250 until 1550. To be included in the database, students must have studied at least at one university in the German Empire and have achieved the degree of a master, Magister Artium. A bachelor's degree, therefore, is not sufficient to be included in the database. Noble students, however, are included even without a degree. The ERAG database contains a selected group of people who often reached leading positions in society and can thus provide insights into the medieval origins of the modern knowledge society. Currently, the database contains around 70,000 people with 380,000 observations, so-called events, located in 24,000 places. The development of the RAG has been funded since 2001. Last year, the RAG was incorporated into the Repertorium Academicum REPAC and will be continued therein. REPAC, a kind of holding structure for several projects, is run at the University of Bern in Switzerland. The aim of the RAG is not only the collection of biographical data within the framework of a digital prosopography, but also the digital connection of scholars and knowledge, which means the connection of person with their written works, as the symbolic image shows here. <clears throat> this brings us to the data model of the RAG. At first glance, it's a very simple data model. However, simplicity is the great strength of the model. Originally, the model consisted of the main categories person, event, location. The category doc document was added later to be able to link written works and correspondences with the persons. An event stands for an observation at a point in life. Events can be, for example, geographical and social origins of a person, fields of study and degrees, as well as later professional activities. There are a total of 800 such event categories in the database for recording biographies. Locations can be places or institutions such as universities, schools, churches and courts, ecclesiastical or secular. <clears throat> Within the data analysis, we work with the categories on different layers or levels, starting from the persons. As before in the RAG, we analyze the persons with prosopography, while for the written works, we use instruments of text analysis. The locations help us to spatially structure and evaluate the data. In the data analysis, we first consider persons, works and locations as knowledge carriers. This results in a static model because we disregard the dynamic aspects of knowledge here. We include this dynamic by looking at the person, works and locations under the aspects of migration, mobility, network and hub, which leads us to our model of knowledge circulation. <clears throat> In this case of a person and migration mobility, we assume that the person carries with him the knowledge acquired at university and that this knowledge must therefore have been available in the places where the scholars stayed after their studies. In this context, person can also be a knowledge hub, a kind of knowledge distributor, for example, within the network analysis. We analyze documents and locations in a comparable way as persons. Let's look at some examples. We log in now into the backend of the RAG. I switch to the browser. Let's start with the students and their mobility. The map shows the places of origin of the students in the RAG by university. We can use the time slider to show how these university origin spaces filled up. It's already clear here how important universities in Leuven and Cologne 
were for students from England and Scotland. We have a closer look here. You see the black ones. This is Leuven. I fade out them, fading in. And Cologne, the green. Looking up here to the island, becomes clear, as you maybe already know, that these two universities have been very important for England, Wales, Scotland, but not for Ireland. This is the starting point, so to speak, a general overview. Specifically, we ask where did the students come from? What did they learn at university? In, in what professional positions did they apply their knowledge? Let's make an example. <clears throat> I've taken students with places of origin in Ireland, England, Wales or Scotland as a data sample. As a reminder, these students must have attended at least one university in the German Empire. In most cases, as we have seen, this has been Leuven or Cologne. This legend here on the right is automatically created in the database with a brown point for geographical origin, green or personal data such as birth, death, marriage, etc. Blue is study data and red data on activities. It is clear that the German universities were not important for Ireland, which can be explained by the long journey to these universities. Such journeys were not only expensive, but could also be very dangerous. This also explains why students from England, Wales, Scotland mostly attended Cologne or Leuven, as these two universities were easier to reach than other universities within the German Empire. But it's only a general trend. Of course, there were also students who traveled very far to be able to attend a university. You can fade in and fade out now here. These dots and you see, for example, region of Scotland. We just make a point if we don't know where this color really came from. Quite often it the uh, source says from Scotia, but with the help of this, of this dot, we can say, OK, maybe around here there have been a couple more uh, students. If you look at the study data, you see the importance of Cologne and Leuven, but of course also up here St. Andrews and Glasgow, down here Oxford, Cambridge, and these small ones here are schools. We also record Latin schools. The scholar has been visiting a Latin school. If we consider the students from the data sample as knowledge carriers, we can use the next visualization to show the activity spaces by fields of study. Blue the artists, red the jurists, black the theologians and green the physicians. We do not have enough time to go into all the details of this map. However, we see, for example, in Denmark, the traces of the noble reformer John McAlpine from Scotland, who studied in Wittenberg and became rector of the University of Copenhagen. Here. Traveled up here and landed up here. So. You can see that theologians have another profile, for example, as the jurist here, all the line down here is going to Cologne, but also to Vienna. As you maybe know, Vienna is also a very important university, especially for the Scots. And theology is more spreading also up to the north here. We can click on his biography of this John McAlpine. You see here these events. I can sort them. And then you have the green events, the personal data. You have his study events. And then here you see the later activities. Taking the example of the physicians, we also see for the physicians that the data on professional activities is still must be still incomplete. 
as research on professional activities often requires considerable knowledge of local history and sources. For regions outside the German Empire, we have not always been able to do this research with the same density as for the empire itself. But this now opens new possibilities for potential sister projects that could fill in this missing data here. There have been a couple of scholars coming down from Scotland studying medicine here in Leuven or Cologne, or especially, of course, in Paris, but Paris is not included in our data sample here. And then they went back here to England and Wales, uh, Scotland. So far, we have looked at people as knowledge carriers from the perspectives, perspectives of migration and mobility, but we also examine them, as I said, with network analysis. This visualization shows the network of the data sample. Within the network, a person can play a role as a knowledge hub, like Martin Luther here for John McAlpine, for the same John. So I go a little bit out here and you see the whole network, then you can connect the network with your persons from Ireland, England, Wales and Scotland here. And you see <clears throat> Martin Luther as a very important person is coming here into the center. And he's connected to John McAlpine and through the event of a promotion, Promotionsgrad, Dr. Theol, Doctor in Theology, a degree, we click on it and see, okay, they have the same event down here. And it's one event with two people. One is Martin Luther, he's the teacher, and one is our John here. We can apply the same analysis techniques as for persons to the other two levels of the data model, the levels of written works and correspondence, which we can also consider under the aspects of migration, network and hub. For example, here you see written works whose content has been captured with meta keywords, for example, works on geography, on history, but also works that we still have to categorize with not with uh, more keywords. If I take this out here, you see there are a couple left and you see here the keywords. For example, also a poem, Werkgedicht, and this is quite roughly done, but it's easy to go more into details with more detailed um, meta keywords. You always have the time slider to see what happens within time and space with your content. The next visualization shows correspondences between physicians in the RAG. Here we only see the personal connections but it is also possible to show what the correspondence partners exchanged about. And you see here the people forming this network. The blue ones are really the physicians, great physicians like uh, Joachim von Watt or Konrad Gessner. They're coming from the empire or from the southwest from the empire, of course, because of our data set. And you can see how this network is building up here. And this network is always a mixture between uh, betweenness centrality degree and the degree that shows uh, the most. Um, so it's all it's always a connection between um, the person that has the most the most and the person that is the best connector. And the two together is are forming this network here. So in the end, we will put the three levels, person, written works and correspondence together. As the last visualization on the scholar Nicolas Wiemann shows, who by the way, wrote the first manual on swimming technique in history. 
In his case, we see that the legend here was expanded, including works and correspondence. Werke correspondence here. In this short time, I have only been able to give you a very small insight into our work, and I thank you very much now for your attention.